My name is Eileen Stern. And when did you come to MCC? In 1988. How did you hear about the job position? Um, I had had a number of relationships with MCC before that time. I had taught a course uh, in managerial communications here, and I was on the search committee for the first person who was hired to be director of the Women's Center when that was a, a standalone position. I represented the League of Women Voters on that mm -hmm. uh, search committee. In the 70s, right? Yeah. Probably. I'm very bad at yeah. time geography, but yes, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, her name was Bettina, that part I remember. Um, but um, I had been in a small consulting firm to that point, and my first child was going to college, and making more money became more important than building my company. And uh, the um, president of the Manchester Chamber of Commerce had been invited to apply for the position, and she said, well, she couldn't make that change, but she knew of somebody she wanted to recommend. And so she recommended that I apply for the position, and I did. Do you remember if there was a search committee then? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I do remember that um, Judy Pike, I don't know why I remember that she was on it, but she was um, the um, administrative assistant to maybe the academic dean. I don't think it was the president. Jack Gannon, who was going to be my boss, was on the search committee. Louine Corwin was on the search committee. Um, Al Werbner was on the search committee. And one other person who's just not um, settling in at the moment. What were some of the things that you did initially when you got here in the late 1980s? Um, I was the first person to have a position dedicated to workforce development and to customized training. Until that time, a um, division director, Mario Fiandella, and a professor whose name is escaping me, tried to do a couple of courses that they brought out to the community. I think they, in the end, did two courses. And it, it's just too much for a person who has either a full administrative load or a full academic load to do that kind of, of um work in many cases. And at about the same time uh, that um, they were recognizing that as much as they had wanted to do, they weren't accomplishing much of it, um, the uh, system office uh, became involved with a consultant from the uh, Boston area who was uh, doing some consulting I think his big project and his presentation and his book was called um, Jobs for the Future, maybe it was Jobs for the 21st Century. Um, and so other colleges were just beginning to um, consider the idea of um, what we called business and industry services, still actually do. And um, so Manchester had the second full-time position and hired me for that. And um, I uh, began relationship building. I began um, offering and um, facilitating customized training. I began working on grants. I went on the speaker's circuit. I would have... Uh, some days I'd have breakfast in uh, one Rotary Club and dinner in another, and um, I just tried um, to get the college's name out to the community as widely as possible. And um, at the same time, uh, I was offering courses that were pertinent to the workforce. Do you think the community, the business community, was receptive and responsive to your overtures? Well, that's a really good question. The answer would probably be yes and no. 
we had some partners that got the idea of it and were very receptive and joined us in grants and utilized us for training and we had some that just couldn't quite figure it out. They saw the community college with one definition and in one light and that's all they could uh, see. Um, and um, and I, I think to some extent the fact that I was a woman required me to develop a voice that particularly men in the workplace would listen to. I very early on uh, asked um, a friend of mine who was the national sales manager of, of a corporation, he wasn't located in this area, and I said, something to the effect of tell me, tell me some story, something I can do at the beginning of one of these talks so that people will listen. And he gave me a, a little uh, joke type story and the first couple times I told it, the men would be like, they, they were shocked. They could not get over the fact that I would speak in, in the same manner that businessmen spoke to each other. And um, so, yeah, it, it did make a difference. Do you have any um, anecdotes or uh, stories that stand out particularly over the years? Funny stories? Hmm. I'm drawing a blank on that for some we'll reason. We'll move on and maybe we'll come back to that. Well, actually, well, I do have one, and, and it had nothing to do with business and industry services, but it, it did occur to me this morning, and I think it, it's something that, that's worth holding on to a little bit. I don't know uh, if you remember, but uh, at one point, uh, the governor at that time, John Rowland, came for a tour of our campus. And um, I was chair of the relatively newly formed Legislative Action Group, and I walked the campus with Governor Rowland and uh, President Dowby, and it, and it was pouring rain. I mean, it was as if the heavens had opened up, and um, just pouring rain. So we have these enormous umbrellas, and we got to the back of the lower campus, and as charming as the lower campus was, frequently the back part, those horrible trailers, the ones that were real trailers in the back, just looked like they needed to be in a dump somewhere. And at that point, President Dowby said to the governor, gee, I've been here for about a decade, and I do not remember, uh, or I, I have never had a governor on this campus. And Governor Rowland said, of course you haven't. No governor could have been on this campus, seen these, and not given you a new campus. And indeed, that was the beginning of our funding for mm -hmm. a new campus. And pouring rain as all this is going on. So I, I just recalled that as, as an interesting uh, bit of memorabilia. What are some of the accomplishments that you're most proud of? Okay. I am extremely proud of the machine shop that I had on campus. I did a lot of very diverse things. They had to do with um, uh, customized training within a company. They had to do with custom, or I guess you wouldn't call it customized, but training of state employees. Um, a lot of varied things, um, but one of the things um, that came to me through a grant, the Metro Hartford Millennium Project grant. The group of manufacturers that participated in that wanted the community colleges to take over training of manufacturing employees. And it really wasn't our bag at the time, but the other groups that were providing that kind of training were not meeting the expectations of these manufacturers. And so I went to a year's worth of meetings about it and uh, participated in grant applications. And now on this campus there is a machine shop. It includes five what are called manual machines and two CNC machines and we can provide training to people in the manufacturing sector. 
And even though at this moment there's some question about how quickly manufacturing will come back, there is still enough manufacturing in this region to require people be trained, and, and employers cannot hire untrained people and then train them. That's not the way the world works anymore. And so um, between the projects I participated in and the grants I applied for, I felt that was my machine shop and my CNC machines. And I, I was extremely proud of that. And it is training that is continuing. We've had varied people come through the door. We've had people who were college students uh, who just weren't finding their way through. We've had uh, veterans who, um, who have just not found their way back. We uh, had a real variety of people, women, young women, older people. Um, and I, I, I think that uh, it's a, a, an important service that the college has been able to provide. You worked uh, with Jack Annan for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Can you describe uh, what type of individual he was? Jack Annan was Mr. Community College and Mr. Continuing Education. He had a wonderful sense of humor, and he had a very good approach, in my perspective, to management in which, you know, he'd say, I hire you, you're a professional, act like a professional, do your job. And that was a wonderful uh, empowerment to have. And, um, and as much as I loved working for him and loved his sense of humor and, and his humanity, I mean, he was really very uh, much of a family man, a father, so that made it kind of easy to, to work through whatever was going on outside the office also, although we all were very professional. But... Um, Whatever was going on, we all knew that um, Jack would just let us do our job. And after Jack left, we realized how much he had done for us behind the scenes. We realized all the things he never told us that he did to get our budgets through and get other administrators, dare I say, off our backs, or, you know, he, he was um, very good at just letting us do our jobs and finding ways to do it. I had an issue uh, with another administrator and who wanted to tell Continuing Ed how to do something, and I had to tell Jack that I had met a brick wall and there was nothing that I could do about it. And Jack said, okay, and he called this person's supervisor in. The door was closed. The door opened, and suddenly I was able to do what needed to be done, but in a very understated way and always with a, a great sense of humor and a great sense of humanity. He, I, I think he was um, one of quite a number. I know there are a number of people who were on this campus for years and years that added uh, uh, humanity and, and um, creativity, um, but he was certainly way up on that list. If you were um, going to give advice to someone who has recently been hired, going to start their career in the next month or two, what would you tell them about working at MCC? Um, I would tell them that I had a wonderful, wonderful experience at MCC, both professionally and personally. I would tell them how lucky they are. I would encourage them to be very serious but very creative because I think that not only is this a great place to work and to accomplish things, but it's a great place to, to make things happen. I've always found um, if you approach things both professionally and, you know, thinking through what's important to everybody else, I've always found that it's a place where a lot of people can make things happen. 
being happy you, you landed here for the last 20 plus years of your career? Oh, I, I, I am, and I was, and it was a wonderful experience, and yes, I, I was very glad that coincidentally I landed here, and I had interaction with quite a number of very interesting and creative people. I guess creativity has always been very important to me, and this is certainly an institution that has allowed creativity not just for people who are doing um, canvas art or not just for people who are doing film, but a lot of room for creativity and a lot of definitions. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I, I, that's, I'm trying to think of any, I, I had tried to think in advance of issues that I might uh, be able to share, but most of them become very nitty gritty in terms of the grants that uh, the college was involved with, or, um, and, and I think the questions you've asked really have um, touched a, a lot of the issues. I guess I would, if, I, I'm always very careful about when I offer advice because I'm not quite sure people always mm -hmm. really want uh, advice, but if somebody really seemed to want advice, I think I would suggest that they really jump in, that they really participate, that they really look at opportunities. I don't know if it remains the kind of opportunity now, but working for the wine auction, that was always an opportunity to uh, cross paths with people from all over the campus and the community, and uh, it certainly accomplished quite a bit. It raised quite a bit of money for the college for scholarships and, and uh, certain departments within the uh, college. But it w also was an opportunity for people to be working together. Oh, I guess if I were going to share something, there's something that was really important to me that I would like to share, and now these two things in a row are going to make it sound like I was all play and no work, but that's okay. One of the things that I enjoyed most at the college was working with the Women's Caucus. The Women's Caucus, there should be a, a, a men's caucus too. I, I think it would be a wonderful idea. It just so happened that there was a, um, there were some roots of a women's caucus here. And uh, we started two really interesting programs that I think gave people a great opportunity to come together. One was a luncheon in the springtime where somebody from the faculty or staff who had a particular interest or a particular bit of knowledge would speak to the rest of us. And I learned the most fascinating things. I mean, you know, you, you really have no idea who your coworkers are until they have the ability to share it with you. But the other thing we did was there was a serious award where people were nominated and they got a plaque, but the best thing were what we called the silly awards. Uh, a few of us would go to the dollar store and pick up something that just caught our fancy, and we'd recognize each other for um, little silly things that were pretty serious underneath because it acknowledged the fact that people here are very giving and very um, contributing, although I guess that's somewhat redundant. But I always said when I was involved with um, the Silly Awards that that was my favorite job at the college. And I guess, perhaps to a certain extent, if I could go in a range from seeking and winning grants, doing basic literacy, uh, training for state employees, certified nurse training, and still also give out silly awards to my colleagues, I guess I'm really describing a career and a location for my career that I was really very glad to, to have landed at, as you said. Did you ever receive a silly award? Oh, yeah. 
bunches of them. I can't even remember what they were. I mean, they were always, um, you know, uh, little things. Oh, I wish I could remember any of them, but um, nothing's coming to, to mind. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, anything else we should add? No, I think we covered everything. It was very. Anything um, on the note cards that you want to um, bring up? Uh, I think that we've really covered it all. Okay. Good. We aim to be thorough. Okay. Well, I guess the one thing that I I think I might have alluded to very briefly, but I I think we have much to be proud of uh, in this area, and it's the area of political action. MCC really was among the earliest of the community colleges who understood the value of political action it wasn't my own idea. I happened to hear Jonathan Pelto, who um, is uh, out in stores, and he was a legislator who was very supportive of higher ed. And he spoke, I believe it was an Eastern, and he really emphasized the importance of uh, people at the college and university level recognizing that they had to develop their constituencies and they had to get their constituencies to reach out, to speak to legislators, to get the message out to the public. And so we started something on campus very early um, and um, then uh, there were similar activities going on at Tunksis. Uh, because Betty, um, the person who was very active in uh, in the Marifino. force, Betty Marifino, was at Tunksis. And together, Manchester and uh, Tunksis um, conducted a, a statewide Saturday event where uh, they brought students together to help students understand their power in communicating with their legislators. And um, I guess that was another favorite part of my job. I really, really, for that period of time that we were involved in uh, that effort, uh, I found that it was something that made me feel as though I was accomplishing something. It made me feel very, um, very good about what I was doing. I believe in the community colleges. I believe in Manchester Community College. And I think that whether we're talking about legislative action or fundraising or keeping the troops happy or accomplishing our jobs, um, we are, are part of something and have been part of Those of us who have been lucky enough to work here for a while were part of something that was very um, positive and worthwhile and empowering.